Hello again, Mother. Jonathan, back already? Good, good. I was just about to go outside to find you. You shouldn't stay away for so long. Do you need my medical attention, Mother? Oh, you know I always refuse to let you listen to my chest, son. It always seemed awkward, even when I felt ill. I think you should take this. You'll feel better. I'm not sure I'll ever feel better, but thank you, my son. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Good evening, young man. There's no need to call me that, Dr. Reed. Young man, do you require medical attention? I don't like asking for help. I don't want to be one of those poor sods dying in the streets. There's no shame in asking for help, especially when you are in desperate need of it. Here, take this. You should recover in no time. Thank you. I suppose. Goodbye. Good evening, Mr. Grader. Are you sure nobody followed you here, Dr. Reed? Do you need help, Mr. Grader? Death by disease or by bullet? Do I really have to choose? Well, I have nothing to stop the bullets, but this should make you feel better. You have a strange sense of humor, Dr. Reed, but thanks anyway. Goodbye, Mr. Grader. Take care. You again? What do you want? Do you need medical help, Miss Paxton? I may, but I have no money for your scams, Doctor. I don't charge patients. My scam is much more subtle than that, Miss Paxton. All right, then. Thank you, Doctor. But don't think I take you for an ally of the working class. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Good evening, Mr. Baker. Hmm. Why do I always have feelings of deja vu when I talk to you? Do you need my medical attention, sir? I'm afraid I do. I knew we should have left London. I don't want to appear tactless, but you're risking your health by remaining outside at this hour of night. Says the doctor who also works outside at night. But as always, the imprudent person enjoys the company of their fellows. Goodbye, Mr. Baker. Jonathan Reed, at last we meet. The cards warned me you would visit tonight. I beg your pardon, sir. Do I know you? Of course you do. Our mutual friend, Dr. Swansea, can't speak highly enough of you. 
My name is Usher. Usher Talltree. You are the leader of the Brotherhood, are you not? Primate of the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll, to be precise. I'm really glad we met tonight. I love it when the cards tell me a truth. The cards told you to expect me? Yes, they can tell me everything. They told me that you have not taken another life since your poor sister died. Do you require medical attention? If you don't mind. You'll feel better after taking this. Thank you very much. I feel better already. Is there anything you could tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Aloysius Dawson? Yes, of course. We met on several occasions. With time, he got deeper and deeper into the occult. He's not the only one. It's been quite the fashion for several decades. The Golden Dawn, for instance, is just one example. True. Aloysius was a member of the Golden Dawn until 1900. Then his thirst for dark knowledge grew. I'm talking forbidden texts, readings which blackened his heart. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? I really don't know. I don't often go outside. And when I do, it's usually to quite distant destinations. So you see nothing in the stars for me. You're a poor fortune teller then. Oh, I can tell you many things. They will only concern you, not the city. For example, I know that you offered your sister the final rest she asked for. Do the cards speak of my Mary? No. It's the burning aura of guilt that precedes you everywhere you go. Read my fortune. You have been chosen, Jonathan. I see on you the mark of a strong being, so powerful it needn't even reveal its strength. Can you read the cards for me? Are you sure you want to know what they will reveal? Yes, I am. It will cost you 150 shillings. Perhaps later. Tell me about yourself. What do you do here, besides turning cards in the middle of the night? I'm for most. A charlatan. For a few, I'm a vampire. And for you, I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. Some believe you to be a vampire. Who? The guard of Prewen, who else? For a time, they sent spies to observe my activities, and they even broke into my home to gather proof. Did they steal anything from you? A personal notebook they quickly took to their headquarters. All they had to do is to look at me. I'm aging. What better and definite proof that I'm not an immortal? Do you want your notebook back? If you ever find it, I'd be glad to have it back, of course. I do ask one thing, though. Do not read it, Jonathan. Some secrets are not meant to be revealed, even to immortals. For how long have you been a primate? It was 15 years last year. What do you make of Dr. Swansea? Edgar is a brilliant and dedicated man. A man of his time, sometimes a little muddled, but always looking for new paths and new concepts. May I ask you about the Brotherhood? Of course. But I must warn you that there are some subjects we consider taboo, in spite of our fondness and acceptance of your kind. I know there is no love lost between the Guard of Prewen and the Brotherhood. What caused this rift? It was 1801. The Brotherhood was stronger then, a strength that made them hungry for ever greater power. An argument divided them. The wound never healed. What was the nature of the disagreement? The problem was that both sides considered themselves the legitimate heirs of the original Brotherhood. We divide up the books, the relics, not always fairly or with consideration. Who founded the Brotherhood? That's precisely the kind of question I cannot answer. It is delicate and may reveal some of our secret traditions. So you're not just a club of academics and scholars. Once upon a time, very long ago, 
The Brotherhood did more than simply study the vampires. They took actions to eliminate the more ferocious and corrupted. How do you measure the amount of blood on my hands? I told you. The cards always tell the truth. Well, most of the time. Is it possible to tell me my future? A vampire's fate is much more delicate to read, Doctor. But I can try. All right. Let me hear it. You're on a path to redemption, Jonathan. But be careful. One single trip and you'll fall. That doesn't sound promising. Take this, young Ekon. As a personal reward for your strong will. Keep following the right path and you'll reach safety. How did you learn about Mary? And spare me the hocus pocus parlor tricks. The truth! Now! Swansea told me. Don't look at me like that. His task is to observe and gather information about vampires. He had to tell me about Mary. Mary did not deserve her fate. She had already suffered enough during her life. And yet the pain and the suffering went on after her death. Suffering is part of the immortal condition. Some prefer to lose their minds rather than face the simple truth. Pain will never stop. Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander. Yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. Oh, and the Empress, again. What are the cards trying to tell us? Good evening, Miss Teasdale. How have you been since you returned home? Dr. Reed. Oh, thank God you returned safely from these awful streets. I was so worried about my father that I left without thanking you properly. Please don't mention it, miss. Good. I found him, you know. My dad. Or what was left of him. I think my abductor intended to do the same thing to me. Do you need my medical attention, miss? I don't need your help, specifically. I can assure you there are many competent doctors around. I have no doubt about it, but I'm offering you my help anyway. All right then, but please leave me alone for now. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Never heard of him. Really? He's very well known in London, throughout the country even. But he a big shot or something. Never interested in politics myself. All words and no action. What do you do for a living, Miss Teasdale? Before my kidnapping, I was a waitress in a pub. Now I'm unemployed. Were you fired? No. It's just that after my recent experience, I don't feel like I can go back to my normal life. I need to do something useful. Be very careful, Miss Teasdale. You were lucky to escape death once, but vampires lurk everywhere. You killed my kidnapper by yourself, didn't you? No offense, Doctor, but you're just a doctor. I don't see why I couldn't do the same. What do you intend to do? Dad always told me, Louise, if you want something, don't stop until you have it. I did my research and I found it. Ichabod Frogmorton, professional vampire hunter. I'll be his apprentice. What can you tell me about this area? I've never really liked this part of town. It was where my father wanted to live. I won't remain here much longer. What exactly don't you like about it? People here are contemptuous and elitist. My dad always said, Louise, always treat people like you want them to treat you. You seem to cherish your father a great deal. Dad was the best. He kept an eye on me, but let me make my own mistakes. Louise, he used to say, mistakes are the best teacher. You would have liked him. I'm sorry you didn't have the opportunity to say goodbye. That's all right. He's buried in consecrated ground now. Nothing bad can happen to him. Louise, 
Tell me what you really think about your father's sacrifice to save you. I'm proud he went after me. I forgive him all his harsh words, all his bloody attitudes. I only wish I could tell him how much I loved him. Yes. It can be traumatic not having the chance to say goodbye to those we love. Yes, Doctor. And there's no treatment for that type of pain, isn't that right? That may be the last thing my father taught me. Louise, what can you tell me about the vampire who captured you? The little fucker claimed he'd fallen in love with me. That he wanted to spend eternity with me. Not a bad idea. At least that's the way it seemed at first. Really? Did you consider accepting his proposal? Well, immortality. Not a common wedding gift, is it? I think he just wanted to have his way with me. Can vampires even fuck, Doctor? What? Um, well, I, 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 I really can't answer that. I, well, since they are creatures of blood, um, physically speaking, I suppose, an erection is possible, but I... Don't be embarrassed, Dr. Reed. I was just asking. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful. Until we meet again. It's always been your house, Dad. Not mine. Support the equality between men and women. Women die too in this war. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Do you need my medical attention, Charlotte? Indeed. Unlike you and my mother, I can still become ill. Oh, you cannot imagine how relieved I'd be to catch a cold again. My mother once told me the same thing. I sometimes wonder if she's forgotten what it feels like to be ill. What do you know about Aloysius Dawson? That man is a tyrant. The embodiment of greed and selfishness. All I despise about this country. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Yes, Mr. Jonathan? Do you need medical attention, Avery? I won't refuse, sir. I don't feel that good these days. Here is your prescription. You'll feel better soon enough. Thank you very much, sir. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? Not much, sir. Mr. Dawson's house used to be a good house, with many servants. I heard he fired them all recently. Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan. But please return as soon as possible. What do you need from me, Jonathan? Do you need my medical attention? It would appear that old habits die hard, my dear. I would appreciate your help as always. And I'm happy to give it to you, as always. Thank you, Jonathan. What can you tell me about Aloysius Dawson? I never met the man. I know Clarence tried to contact him recently, but I don't know why. Goodbye for now. At least you survived the Great War. I feared the worst. London. We meet again, Mr. Kimura, in a more peaceful situation. Dr. Reed, still visiting London by night? We must both be nocturnal animals, you and I. After your captivity, I thought you'd be more cautious. Breathing the cold night air helps calm my mind, sir. I've had the most frightening nightmare since I escaped that filthy jail. Do you need medical assistance, sir? Don't believe that I'm the kind of man with a fragile constitution. But I'm afraid my imprisonment has done more harm than I thought. There is no need to be ashamed. We are all equally vulnerable. 
cause of this disease. Yes. Well, I know now life is as precious as it is fragile. Do you know anything about a man called Aloysius Dawson, by any chance? Well, I've never met the man personally, but I invested money in some of his companies when I came to London. A brilliant businessman. How is the situation in the West End? I've heard rumors about armed men patrolling and fighting infected citizens in these very streets. I was lucky they didn't shoot me when I was abducted. May I ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Kimura? I am... I was... a landlord. A wealthy one. And... not a very kind one, I realized recently. Why this sudden epiphany? Is it because of your near-death experience? I was already feeling nostalgic about Weymouth, my hometown. With recent events, I'm thinking about going back there. What can you tell me about your abduction? If you really want to know, I was locked in that building for three or four days. My jailer was insane, mumbling about sacrifice and voices. And why didn't he sacrifice you? That was the weirdest part. He claimed to spill blood was not enough. It had to be done when some stars were aligned. Which stars? That's the whole point. He wanted me to talk to him about some Red Queen configuration or constellation. I've never heard of such an astronomical term. What did he say about voices? He constantly whined about the voice of his master, ordering him to do terrible things. He wanted to silence the voice by offering blood. My blood. Why are you so nostalgic for your hometown, Tadao? I was focused so much on making money, I almost forgot that my relatives and friends are threatened by this epidemic. Have you heard anything from your family? I was not only a bad landlord, I was also a bad husband. I've not seen my wife and son for years. Busy, busy, busy. At least now you're ready to go back and see them. But don't be surprised if your son bears a grudge, sir. You make it sound like you suffered from an absent father yourself, Dr. Reed. Well, I'll keep your warning in mind. Have you no friends at all? Over the years, I'm afraid my greed turned me into my friend's adversary, while I became friends with my professional rivals. Those you grew up with didn't share your views on money and success. Would you believe I was once a member of poetry circles and an astronomy club? We were young, such joyful dreamers then. But I stopped laughing long ago. Can you change? And is it what you really want? If so, it must come from within, not without. I've seen what an altruistic gesture can do. Nothing forced you to save me, Dr. Reed, but you did. I will follow your example in these matters from now on. There is no need to thank me. Rescuing a London citizen should not be out of the ordinary. Though I'm afraid it may appear so in these difficult times. You did not only rescue me, you fought for me. You put your life in danger to save me. That's quite extraordinary. How will you cope if you're attacked again? I don't know. I've heard about these men and women who patrol the West End every night, chasing criminals like my abductor. Maybe I should join them. Tell me, Tadao, why was your abductor so interested in your passion for astronomy? I don't know. We met a few times at the Royal Greenwich Observatory. He seemed to share my hobby. Then he invited me to his house and locked me in. Yes, astronomy is a fascinating subject. When I was a child, my mother bought a small telescope for my sister and I. We spent many a pleasant evening stargazing. Stars are not just dots in the sky, Doctor. They are the key to our understanding of the cosmos. They remind us how insignificant we are. You're right. But children love magic and stories. I remember our mother told us constellations have the power to protect us. Protection by the light of the stars. That's sweet.
You remember the name of these constellations? Pegasus. It was the constellation my mother liked the most. Memory's a strange thing. I can recite without hesitation the names of the 88 constellations, yet I barely remember my own childhood. Did he fake his interest in astronomy to get close to you? No. In his madness, he spoke about a blood sacrifice to be made to his master when the stars aligned to a specific configuration. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care. London has brought so much pain to me.